Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 109, and for this one, we play a 2-5 meetup game in Las Vegas. There are a lot of big pots. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Uh, there's some jokes in there as well, but before we get started, I've got a quick announcement to make. We're going out to Houston December 12th and December 13th for a meetup game at Paramount Social Club. So we were trying to go out there in May, but uh, unfortunately, some things went down and we had to postpone it. Uh, we're excited to go out there now. Um, if you are interested in joining us for drinks, poker, and bomb pots, and a bunch of other shenanigans, then uh, check out the description box below. I'll have some more details in there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. It's another amazing day in Las Vegas. We're here at the South Point for a special Halloween-themed meetup game. We've got 100 on the list for 2-5. Andrew shows up with some dude I've never seen before. Whatever, man. I'm not jealous. Andrew can have other friends. Sick lederhosen, bro. A few other friendly faces make appearances, including Jamie Kerstetter, Ashley Sleeth, and main event champ, Scott Blumstein. I'm in costume as well today. I'm Woody from Toy Story. The costume contest winner is this gentleman here who came in as the king of hearts. He won $200 total from Andrew and myself. All right, let's get into the poker now. I buy in for a thousand, which is the max, and I take my seat. We're off to a fantastic start as we pick up pocket ace in middle position. I open to 15. Cut off calls, the button calls, and so does the big blind. We're going four ways to the flop. It comes queen, eight, seven, rainbow. The big blind checks. I bet 35. Everyone lets their cards go. We are the champions, my friends, and we'll keep on fighting until the end. Here we've got king jack suited, under the gun, plus one, and we raise it up to 15. The cut off calls, as does the button. The action's on the big blind. He's a younger player who seems to be good, but he's lost a few big pots in the last couple minutes and could potentially be steaming. He puts in a three bet to 80 towards the bottom of my early position opening range, so folding is reasonable. I have this disease though, where I try to win every hand possible if I think I have a greater than 0% chance of doing so. I'm not a quitter. I put in a four bet to 225. I have some decent card removal. I open from early position, so it's very possible I could have a high pair or a hand like ace king. Big blind seems fully capable of recognizing that he's in a good situation to be three bet squeezing with a hand like a small suited ace. Plus he may be tilting, so all those factors combined lead me to four bet light. Cut off and button both fold. Big blind tanks, then flats, leaving himself with only 450. It's very suspicious. Now I'm concerned that he's setting a trap with a big pair. So heads up, the flop comes 776 with two spades. We didn't connect well with that. The big blind checks. I'm gonna give up. Maybe I am a quitter after all. The turn is the four of spades. The big blind jams. I don't have anything. I fold. The opponent shows pocket queens. Our assessment of the situation pre flop was incorrect. He had it. They always have it. I add on for 300, then we're dealt ace jack suited in the cutoff. Under the gun limps in, under the gun plus two calls, I raise to 25. Both limpers call, we're going three ways to the flop, to king queen seven with two hearts, checks to me. I bet 45 with my gutter and one over. Under the gun calls, under the gun plus two folds, we're heads up, the turn is the three of clubs. Under the gun checks, I check back. The river is the 10 of clubs, we've got the nuts. Under the gun checks, I'm not sure what it'll be checking with on the turn and the river that can call a bet at any size, so I make it 120 on the off chance that he's slow playing a big hand, or perhaps he just won't believe that I got anything and he'll call light. He tanks, then he lets it go, we don't get paid, still it feels nice to drill a gutter, make a big hand, and win. Next we've got ace king in the hijack, the player on my right limps in, I raise to 20. The cutoff calls, the button calls, so does the limper, we go four ways to the flop, it's 994 rainbow. Middle position player checks. This is not a board that's gonna connect well with anyone, so I take a stab at it betting 65. I imagine that I could get called by some small pocket pairs, but those hands will have a hard time calling a second bullet without improving, so my plan is to bet big on the turn as well. Cut off calls, the button, and middle position players both fold. It's heads up. The turn is a king. We have top pair, top kicker. I bet 125. Probably should have made it smaller so that I could have gotten called by hand like sevens or eights. Cut off folds. He'd later tell me that he had ace four and flopped bottom pair. In this one, we have ace jack in middle position, under the gun plus two limps in. I raised to 20, big blind calls, under the gun plus two calls, three of us are seeing the flop, it's nine, six, five with two clubs, we all check. The turn is the four of clubs, giving us the jack high flush draw and two overs. Big blind leads for 30. Under the gun plus two folds, I make the call to see what'll happen on the river. Dealer puts out the ace of clubs, we make a flush. The big blind bets 40, it's a very small bet, Seems reasonable to call. That's what I do. I may not have the winner, but it turns out the Jack of Clubs is good. The big blind has king three offsuit with the three of clubs. His little baby flush is not gonna win it. We're back to even on the night after all the chips come towards us. Time for a $10 double board bomb pot. We've got king queen offsuit under the gun. The first flops queen five four with two diamonds. We've got top pair. 
Second flop is 10-7-5 rainbow. We don't have much on that, just two overs and a backdoor straight draw. Checks to the hijack, he bets 40. The big blind calls, calling to win on one board isn't ideal. I don't get the sense the opponents are too strong, so I put in a check raise to 200. This is essentially a bluff. I'm hoping for folds so that I can scoop the entire pot rather than chop it. The hijack folds, the big blind folds as well. We win without much trouble. Things are looking good. We switch tables and pick up ace queen under the gun plus one. It's a straddle pot. I open to 35. The cutoff calls. The button straddler calls as well. We go three ways to the flop and it comes queen jack nine rainbow. We have top pair. It's a pretty coordinated board though. I bet 60 to protect my hand and deny equity. The cutoff folds. The button flats. I figure he'd probably raise with a hand stronger than mine, but could potentially be slow playing a straight. The turn is a three. Shouldn't have changed anything. I check for pot control or to possibly induce a bluff. The opponent fires for 180. This puts me in a tough spot. It's a big bet, but I didn't check to full top pair top kicker on the turn. I call. The river is a deuce. It's another blank. I check. The button bets 200. I've got close to the best hand that I'll ever have given how I played it. it. Seemed like I was ahead on the flop since I didn't get raised and the board ran out nicely, so I should still be ahead if I was winning at that time. I call. We get some bad news. The button has 9-3 suited. The turn wasn't as harmless as I thought. He drilled a strange two pair, and I lose a fairly large pot to get stuck again. Not to worry though, we pick up Ace King and Diamonds in the hijack very shortly after. Under the gun plus one opens at 20. I three bet to 75. The big blind surprisingly cold calls. He should have a very narrow range under these circumstances since he's facing a lot of strength. I put him on a hand like Ace King or Ace Queen suited, Queens, Jacks, and possibly Tens. Under the gun plus one calls, three of us see the flop, it comes ace, ten, deuce, rainbow, it's a dream flop for ace, king, checks to me, I bet 105. Big blind does something that doesn't make sense to me, he jams for about 900 effective. Can't think of a single hand that would make sense to do this with, except maybe ace, king if he's trying to get me off a chop. Under the gun plus one goes deep into the tank for quite some time, then he eventually folds. This is an interesting situation because I've got essentially the best hand that I'll ever have after three betting the under the gun plus one player and betting the flop. I would have just called pre-flop with 10s, deuces and ace 10. Pocket aces, I'd likely check back on this flop to trap the other opponents, but let them catch up. So ace king's the very top of my range. Still, I'm facing a big overbet. Folding's reasonable, but I don't think the big blind would cold call a three bet out of position with ace 10, ace deuce, or 10 deuce. So he shouldn't have any two pair hands. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the player to jam with a set of aces or 10s either. He'd be missing tons of value with those hands if I found a fold with ace king. I call, figuring ace king is the most likely hand that I'll be up against, but there's some chance the opponent's trying to bluff me with some other obscure hand, or just got out of line with ace queen. The dealer puts out the five of spades, then the five of diamonds. Turns out we're not chopping. The big blind turns over ace 10 offsuit. He flopped top two pair, then got paid. That one's frustrating for a ton of different reasons. On the gun plus one would later tell me that he had ace queen and would have called if I wasn't behind him. So that was the case ace on the flop. Small blind gets extremely lucky doing two unorthodox things in the hand that magically work out to cause me maximum pain. I lose two large pots in a row in ways that I didn't expect. After adding on for a thousand, I switch tables and pick up ace king suited again. Just what I wanted to see after getting stacked with it. I'm in middle position and the player on my right opens at 35. I three bet to 110. Hijack cold calls. This hand is looking very similar to the previous one so far. Under the gun plus two folds, it's heads up. Flop comes ace, queen, nine, rainbow. We flop top, top again. I check, thinking this will be a scary board for anything that I'm beating, and I could very well be behind. The hijack checks back. He probably has a hand like kings or jacks. The turn is an eight. It's time to start going for value. Hands are beating, can't call much, so I down bet to 100. Hijack calls, the river is a five. I'm gonna go for value again. I bet 250. The hijack takes his time to assess the situation. The flop check appears to have really confused him. Seems like I'm ahead, especially when the opponent asks. Right after that, he calls. I turn over ace king. That's good enough to win it. The opponent tosses cards to the dealer. Sounded like kings would have been good too, so I assume we got called by jacks. Flop check allowed us to get an extra value better two in there, and we got called light. We take down a big pot for this game. A few hands later, we pick up ace eight in a $10 double board bomb pot. The first flop comes ace nine deuce. Second is queen eight six. We've got a piece on both boards. When that happens, I'm gonna be betting most of the time. Checks to me, I bet 50 from under the gun plus two. The hijack raises to 150, folds to me. It's a very difficult spot for me to be behind on both boards, unless I'm up against a hand like aces or ace queen. I'm going nowhere, I call. The riff raft is out, we're heads up. The top turn is a six, which doesn't help, but the bottom turn is an ace, giving me two pair. I don't wanna check and have this check back. I've got a hand that I'm willing to get it all in with, so I lead for 300. 
Hijack thinks for a long time and doesn't quite know what to do. Think half the folks, yeah. He ultimately lays it down and turns over nine deuce. He fought two pair on the top board and actually has his beat there, but has absolutely nothing on the bottom board and was drawing dead. Put him in a tough spot with a $300 bet, he made a reasonable fold, not knowing what it had since the best case scenario for him in a lot of instances would end up in a chop. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're calling big bets, only having a medium strength hand on one board and nothing on the other. Here I've got Jiggities in middle position, I opened a 20. The hijack calls, the small blind calls are going three ways to the flop, the dealer puts out two queens and an eight, the small blind checks dark, it seems unlikely we're behind, I bet 25. The hijack folds quickly, the small blind makes the call, we're heads up, again the small blind checks dark, the turn is another queen, we make a boat in an odd fashion, sure it's a little scary that we might be up against quads, but you can't always be afraid that your opponent has the nuts. We go into a little town called Value, I bet 40 to target smaller pocket pairs or hands containing an 8. Small blind calls and checks dark for a third time. The river is a four. We're going for value again. I bet 85. The player calls. I turn over the jacks. They're good. Small blind shows jack eight. All of a sudden, we're in a groove. We've won nearly every hand we've gotten involved in at this table. We have 1750 in front of us, and we're feeling good. In the last hand we'll go over, we're dealt jack five suited in the hijack. Under the gun plus one opens to 15. My brain is saying we're obviously folding this, but my hand occasionally does whatever the hell it wants and tosses in three red chips while saying, we're on a roll with a good image, let's keep it going and get unstuck, it's only $15. Small blind calls, big blind calls as well, we go four ways to the flop. Look what we've got here, it's jack seven five rainbow, what a dream, we have a completely hidden two pair hand, checks to me, I bet 30. Small blind throws in a check raise to 105, it's a very odd situation because I have blockers to all set combinations aside from sevens, small blind is an older gentleman, Seems like this is one of those famous, let me see where I'm at raises with a one pair hand. Put him on ace jack, king jack, queen jack, seven five, or perhaps there's some chance he flatted a preflop raise with something like queens. Old people hate three betting preflop, it's just a fact. He even says it right there on the Wikipedia page. The big blind and under the gun plus one both fold. I consider raising, but instead I flat to let my opponent hang himself. We're heads up, the turn is a three, it's a fantastic card. Six four gets there, that doesn't worry me too much though. Small blind bets 200. I get the sense he's afraid I have him beat. I like it. I make the call. The river is a 10. 9 8, which is a double gutter on the flop, gets there, but I never had the sense that I was getting check raised by an older dude with a straight draw on the flop. Small blind checks, so now I really feel like I have the best hand. If I'm going to play Jack 5 suited pre flop, I need to make sure that I get every ounce of value with it when I make strong hands, so I'm certainly going to be betting here. I ask myself, what's the most amount of money that I could get out of a hand like 7 5, Ace Jack, King Jack, or Queens? I ultimately make it 425. If I get called and win, I'll be completely out of a $1,300 hole, and I'll actually have a profit for the evening. I get snap called, but still feel like I'm probably good. Fortunately, I'm not. Two pair. Oh, okay. yeah. so, so. Eddie's, Eddie's Eddie's the other player gets tons of Bradley dollars, one of the very few set combinations that makes sense. I play a silly hand pre flop and get distrominated with it. I call it a night shortly after. I played for six hours and lost 1400 total. That's it for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comments section. I'm happy to get back to you. Big thanks goes out to the South Point. That's, that's our home here in Las Vegas for the meetup games. It's been an awesome place and they always do a really good job. People get into the games right away. Uh, thanks to everybody who came out, including Jamie Kerstetter, Ashley Sleeth, and Scott Blumstein. Uh, that was a really cool one because it was a, the Halloween themed meetup game. Uh, I got smoked, which was not particularly fun, but uh, it happens. Things have been going better now. I'm actually on a pretty big upswing, just waiting for the vlog to catch up to it. Uh, next meetup game is going to be December 10th at Maryland Live. And then after that, we're going to go uh, straight to Houston. So we'll be at the Paramount Social Club December 12th and December 13th. We'll be playing 1-3 on December 12th. And then it's a $150 tournament December 13th. Hope you guys are all doing well. Have a great Thanksgiving and I'll see you guys next time.